this problem. There's a 380 kilogram piano that uh, is sliding 2.9 meters down a 25 degree incline and is kept from accelerating by a man who's pushing back on it parallel to the incline and we're supposed to determine a number of things, uh, mostly just force and work. So let's go ahead and draw a picture. I believe there's an illustration in the text but we should come up with a simplified uh, picture that looks something like this. The piano by now you must know that my artistic skills are terrible. So there's, there's our piano right there. It's got a massive M. This incline makes an angle theta. We'll put in the numbers later. The guy whose hand is here, he's pushing that way. And um, that's more or less that. The displacement is going to slide down this way. I might as well draw that in here now. The delta x vector, the displacement vector, looks like that. And um, what I should do, I'm going to go ahead and note for you right away that the system here, by now in class we should have started to talk about this, uh, the difference between the system and the environment. We're going to treat the system in this case as just the piano itself, so just this. So it's not including the earth, uh, it's just the, just the piano. All right, so let's also look at a free body diagram because look, if we've got forces, chances are we're going to want to think about which way the forces are pointing. Um, this is the mass. There's gravity, which is always pointing down. And with a dashed line, I'm get, going to indicate the direction of the incline. There's a parallel component of gravity that points in this direction. So I'll just go ahead and put that here, make it a little bit thicker, and label that FP. And then pointing up the ramp, that's the direction that the man is pushing. So we'll call this F man, and I believe they tell us there is no friction to worry about, or at least we assume it because there is no other information given about the coefficient of, fr of friction. Okay, so we're looking to get forces and work. So the first question is specifically, uh, what is the force exerted by the man? Um, let's think about what concepts we have. Concepts. We've got forces, so probably Newton's second law might be relevant gravity here. Sometimes I forget to write that down, but we have gravity to worry about. Um, and we'll, we'll eventually start talking about work in later parts of the, prob of, the, uh, of the whole problem. So what equations might we need? Newton's second law, the net force, which is a vector, is equal to m times a. Force of gravity, I can put that in here, is mg. Work is, by definition, w. Whatever force you have, whatever the displacement is, the magnitude of those things times the cosine of the angle between the force direction and the um, direction of the displacement. I'll kind of write it like this. These two things are vectors, but this whole quantity is a scalar. Knowns. Let's see. We know that the acceleration is zero. We know that because in the language it's told us, uh, they tell us that, well, the guy is keeping the piano from accelerating. So A is zero. The mass of the object, the piano is 380 kilograms. The angle of the incline is 25 degrees. And the displacement's magnitude, I'll just write it like that, is 2.9 meters. OK, the first thing we want to do uh, in the first part A is to get the work done uh, by the man. OK, so um, to get there, we're going to need to know if we look at the equation for force, we're going to need to know how much force the guy is pressing. Because we know the displacement, we can think about the angle, we'll talk about that in a second. How much force does the guy uh, exert on the piano? We need, to use, we need to think about Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that the net force in this direction, which why don't I go ahead and label this x, is the force, the parallel component of gravity, minus the force that the guy the man is applying, that's equal to ma, but remember the acceleration is zero, so that tells us that the force that the man applies is equal to the parallel force of gravity. In other words, f man is just mg sine theta, one of those equations that I forgot to write down, but perhaps you have memorized by now. Okay, that's the force that he applies, therefore the work done by the man is this force, mg sine theta, the displacement, well this is the magnitude of, in case anything here was negative, we'll get the magnitude of that, times the cosine of the angle between the direction that the man is pointing, his force, and the displacement. So thinking about what that is, the angle between these two directions is not zero, but 180 degrees. 
cosine 180 degrees. And if you remember, cosine of 180 is negative 1. So you plug everything in, and the precise value here is, well, something that uh, I apparently didn't write down. So, um, ah, I see. This is a minus approximately 4,600 joules. In fact, it appears I jumped the gun a bit. This was all of part B. Part A was just to get what the uh, force is applied by the man, which is really just this part, the mg sine theta. So why don't I go ahead and write that here. This turns out to be approximately 1,600 newtons. Slightly out of order, my apologies, but there we go. We've got part A and part B. Okay. Part C, we're supposed to figure out the work done by gravity. You might have an intuition for what it should be. The work done by gravity would be the force of gravity, whatever that is, um, times the, dis the magnitude of displacement, times the cosine of the angle. But we can also write this as really what we're interested in is how much work does the parallel component of gravity do because the perpendicular component of gravity does no work because it points perpendicular and cosine of that angle is zero. So what we have here is the parallel component of gravity, the displacement, and then the cosine of the angle between the parallel component of gravity and the direction of the displacement. That angle is zero degrees, and so this is just cosine of zero. And so what we have here is the parallel component of gravity times the displacement. Not surprisingly, it turns out to be plus 4,600 joules. And that tells you that for part D, what is the total or net force done on the piano? It's the work provided by the man plus the work provided by gravity. Negative 4,600 plus 4,600 is equal to zero. And just to confirm, there's another way to think about this. Remember that the work done on a system is equal to the change in the energy. If we're told it doesn't accelerate, the piano that is, that means its speed is the same, and therefore its kinetic energy doesn't change. And so if you like, the net work done has to be zero because the energy doesn't change. 